we are going to st- carry on about be wealthy. Be wealthy. And just like last week, we have some guests here today. And if you're Afrikaans, just let the English guy explain to you about the spelling mistake. Um, it's deliberate. Okay, so it wasn't by accident. We're specifically talking about being W E double L, being wealthy. Being wealthy. It's not the same as being wealthy, okay? And it's pronounced wealthy. So don't say wealthy. Just make sure you're pronouncing it correctly because it's meant to be wealthy. You know, I just need to educate, you know, it's just, it's important. How we usually do things in our church, I'm going to read the passage that I want to speak to you guys about. We're going to do a little quick recap, and then I'm going to start preaching to you guys so that we can just have everyone on the same page. We're going to read from Luke. For some reason, I've been stuck in Luke for a while, um, but just a phenomenal book. So we're going to start reading from chapter 16, verse 19, and then you guys can follow us on the board. There was a rich man. Now you, if he does, yeah, work. Okay. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted. This is the most interesting English word I've ever heard. Sumptuously. Sumptuously. Was something ever so nice you turned to your mom and said, Mom, this was so sumptuous. No, never. But so this guy had good food. He feasted sumptuous. I still don't know what it means. I just assume it means very well. Okay. Every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. Verse 22. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. Verse 24. And he called out, Father Abraham had many sons. If you did not laugh, you probably didn't go to Sunday school when you were young. But we, there's no judgment. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flames. Verse 25. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things and Lazarus in like manner bad things, but now he's comforted you and you are in anguish. Verse 26. And besides all this between us and you, a great Chasm has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able and none may cross from there to us. Um, For the guys at the back, that's where we're going to stop. You can just put on the banner for me. We're going to pray, then we're going to start preaching this morning. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that it carries power and authority, Father. I pray for this moment, Father, that as I'm speaking, may it be words that can penetrate the lives of people into their hearts, Father. But I just want to make this clear before you and before everyone in public, Father. It's not my ability, Father, but it's because your anointing rests upon me, Father. And you empower me for my function this morning. It's not because I'm special, but it's because you are good. And I declare that I am just a vessel in need of your anointing, Father. This must not just be a good speech this morning, Father. This must be life-changing words directly from your throne that will change our lives on the inside, Father. So that we can be more determined to follow you. Thank you for your goodness, Yahweh. We pray that in Jesus' wonderful name and everyone says, Amen. If you are here for the first time this morning, I just want to give you a quick recap about what we spoke last week. I've got four slides just to recap that. And last week we had this following saying, says, there's a difference between being wealthy and being W-E-L-L wealthy okay there's a big difference between these two and we were looking at the the parable of the rich fool and we concluded this it's it you can look successful on the outside but you can still be foolish on the inside and i see some of the ladies is looking at their husband yeah yeah <laughs> you can look good on the outside but you can still be silly on the inside but so many times we we evaluate people on the way they look on the outside and what they drive and how fancy they are but when you take the bank statement 
You do not want their car, ladies and gentlemen, and you do not want their house. You just think you want that, okay? So you can look successful, but kind of be foolish. And the biggest sin out of all of this whole idea of this rich fool that we spoke about last week is that the, the, the rich guy thought that prosperity was his calling. I hope you guys can remember we spoke about this guy and Jesus told the story about this rich guy and his, his, his fields produced a lot. And he increased his barns, he increased his storage space and God kind of called him a fool. Why? Because he settled in his abundance. Because he thought that being prosperous was his main goal in life. And that was never the main goal. And his attitude changed. And God took everything away from him in the season. And so we kind of spoke about that. If you want to be the normal wealthy, you need to value possessions. Okay? And you can get wealthy if you value possessions. But if you want to become wealthy, W-E-L-L-T, if you want to be wealthy, you need to value relationships. Why? Because that is what has value in the kingdom of God. So if you want to follow Jesus, you need to be W-E-L-L, wealthy. If you want to, if you want to follow Jesus. Anyone can like Jesus. We, we said this so many times in our church. Anyone likes Jesus. We like to talk about Jesus, but few people want to follow him. And there's a big difference. And so we ended off last week with this idea about being, W-E-L-L, -L, being wealthy. It's something that you need to be. It's not something that happens automatically. There's an action involved. There's a state of being. It's something that you need to invest and implement. And that's what we want to talk about today. So my theme in part two is being good, wealthy. Okay, just part two. It's the same theme. Okay, I just thought you guys are going to get excited there. So our journey today for the next 20 minutes is going to start off with this idea. And we're going to talk a little bit about the afterlife. Life after this life. It's something that has fascinated us for many years, for many generations. The idea of what comes after this. And when it comes to our faith as Christians, there's nothing, nothing different, okay? And there's one thing that I know what all of you guys are thinking, okay? I can read your mind. The afterlife, we're all going to go to heaven. Um. You, that's not where you're going? <laughs> there was this awkward silence. <laughs> I'm, I think we need to make an altar call this morning. Like <laughs> I've met few people in my life that thinks the opposite of this statement, okay? Um, we we kind of ignore this idea, but few of us think, oh, I've never been to a funeral and said, Oh, sorry, he went the other way. Never, never, never. And we do, we do quite often funerals. Everyone always goes to heaven. And even the bad ones, we just don't say where they go to, okay? We just do the funeral and pray and then things are done. But we never talk about the other side. So here's the thing. We always have this idea of this afterlife and going to hopefully heaven. And now you must say, yes, yes, that's where we are going. But why do we like this idea? Dear so much. This is what I want to talk about for one second. Why are we so fascinated about heaven? Why are we so overwhelmed with this idea of being somewhere sometime in the future? And I think the answer is not as comfortable as we would like it to be. I think we are so fascinated about going to heaven because it seems like an instant solution to our problems here on earth. guys are quiet okay don't worry don't worry it's gonna get worse okay it's, it's gonna get much worse and then it's gonna get better but i want you to understand something heaven is not an escape heaven is not a place you run to because you can't cope yeah that is exactly the opposite of when it what it speaks about when it comes to our journey on earth when Jesus came to the earth, he had this idea of bringing heaven from the top down to the earth. You guys did not know? Okay, so, so Jesus did not really come down to take us all up there. He kind of brought the values of heaven down here. 
you guys are very quiet. It feels like I'm not preaching right this morning, okay? It feels like I'm preaching by a deal song. It's very quiet here this morning. I, I, I read this, and I, please excuse me if I can't, if I can't remember the, the person that quoted this or made this statement. But the guy said the following. He says, the greatest issue with Christian folk, that's us, is that they believe things must get worse before things can get better. And so from a humanitarian type of view, when the world goes completely to the opposite of heaven, okay, I'm just going to say, when the world goes completely to hell, how many times do we turn to each other and say, yeah, that's what it is? Yeah. That's supposed to happen. Instead of saying supposed to happen, stepping out and helping, we kind of find comfort in craziness in the world we kind of just pull up our shoulders and say oh we want to go to heaven that's going to be the solution that's going to be the answer and that's kind of our mindset but my problem is that i do have this feeling that what happens here matters to god okay this is my opinion with regards to this so i want to i want to be controversial this morning and if you don't want to come back next week, it's fine. We've already got your offering, so it doesn't, doesn't matter. We'll, we'll worry about next week. Just, just, just be with me for a second here. Yeah. Stop wanting to go to heaven and start being heaven here on earth. We've said this so many times in our church over and over and over and over again. Stop waiting for this instant solution up there and follow Jesus and be the instant solution down here. But why the world does not like us is because when the world goes crazy, we get arrogant and say, ah, that's exactly what the Bible said. The Bible said this is going to happen and things are going to go all too crazy and wars and all those things. And there are certain sections where the Bible does talk about this. But many times a lot of these things are quoted completely out of context. And we see suffering as a sign of our God. I want to... You guys are very quiet. It feels like you don't like the sermon this morning. Okay, okay, don't worry. Just one more little bit worse and then it's going to get better, okay? I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to walk away with one idea this morning. What we do here on earth matters really much more than you think. It's not about skipping an earth season and going to a fantasy place. It's about being heaven here now. While we have a season of serving in God's kingdom right here, right now. That's exactly what Jesus did. He came and brought heaven down to earth. On the contrary, he sacrificed the heavenly places to come and be with us. He did the opposite of what we kind of want to do. You guys look very confused about this. <laughs> uh what I'm trying to tell you now, okay, what I'm trying to minister to you, I want you to understand that as we're going to look at this parable that we just read, is that our actions here determine what's going to happen after here. Our actions in life will determine the afterlife. And if you live this life to skip the season, to be somewhere else, I want to say something very tough. I don't think you are following the example Jesus gave. If you can't love here, you're not going to love there. <laughs> I'm feeling nervous about this message. You guys make me, make me tense up here, okay? Because I, I, know, I know it's a tough message that I want to share because especially for us inside the church, this is very sensitive, okay? Because we were hoping and holding on to this better thing that's coming, this better thing than come. And then, then when I read the Bible, it says we are the better thing here. We are supposed to be the better thing here. But God appoints the better things here and then all we want to do is run away from here. And we think of heaven as a holiday, but God wants someone to do something Yeah. If this was true for Jesus, it's even more true for us. If God's own son was held accountable within this criteria, we will be held accountable in this criteria. And maybe you might not fully, completely 
like what I'm saying, but I can assure you my heart is completely pure before you this morning because I want you to know today matters. And your decision tomorrow matters. And you can be heaven today while you are here. But the reason why this is so difficult is because it costs us a price. And so heaven, the idea of heaven is so, so nice because it's an instant solution. And we just blink our eyes and suddenly it will be easy to love people that side. Why? If you're going to be there and I'm going to be there, I mean, the problem is probably also going to be there. Okay. I don't know why we've got this fantasy idea. But when I see God and I open the book of the Bible, I see God creating a garden here. And creating the world here. And creating man in his image and say, be fruitful and multiply. And then as we mess things up, Jesus comes and he says, be good to people. Take care of one another. Be careful of the materialistic things. I mean, people matter. And this has been said over and over and over again in the Bible. So I don't want to bore with you with all those um, um, information that you are quite familiar with. So I want to give you three points this morning on how we become W-E-L-L wealthy. But it's not going to sound as eye-opening as you think. Some of this information is going to be, oh, here we go again. I know this. Yeah, I know you know this, but listen for a change. (laughs) Point number one, if you want to be W-E-L-L wealthy, is you need to be healthy. You need to be healthy. You are part of your body. Okay, that's fine. You guys don't like that one. Now I knew it was going to be quiet. That's why that's the only two slides I prefer for that. I'm just giving you stuff you know, okay? And then I just thought you are part of your body and you do with that information whatever you want to do. But let me, let me just share this for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have people around us that we are accountable for. And our physical health, it does matter. You know, you know where this point pops up? In the story of my dad. Everyone knows where my dad is. Um, he's got aggressive cancer. He lost a lot of weight. So um, he is in a, in a, I don't want to say in a struggling period. But because of the weight loss, he's struggling with energy and all those type of things. Okay? And he said this to me one day. Because I was very braggerich there talking about stuff. And, and he said, you know, he was there once too. He said he spoke so quickly about health. He so easily jumped off a building into a pool. I know, I can remember that he was in the police force, so he wasn't scared of nothing except his mother-in-law. I mean, it, it runs in the family. He wasn't scared of nothing. When, so, when, when it seemed like someone broke into a house, korpuruk plakis and a hose pipe. That's all he needed. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it just jumps over. He was, he, I, I, I remember him, in the, he's still here, he's not gone. I'm just saying, I remember his younger days as of being a very brave guy. And, and I almost want to call it recklessly brave. When you drive with that man, holy moly. Okay, any case, any case, that's a story for another day. Okay, this is live streamed. I can't share all these personal stories. Any case, he told me this. He says, you know, now at his old age, you begin his old age, in his, in his sickness season. He says, everyone is brave until you sit in his chair where he's battling now. And then you ask yourself questions. What could I have done to be a little bit more healthier? See, maybe a couple of things that I should have done differently in my life so that I can buy a little bit more time to spend with my family. It doesn't matter when we are younger. I mean, we do whatever we want. We eat whatever we want. We use whatever we want. It's irrelevant. But the moment you come to that season in your life, your health suddenly matters. It's only when you lose it when you realize how important it is. And it's exactly the same. Let, 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 can I ask you something? Can I ask you? How on earth do you help other people if you can't help yourself? How do you build a life of faith and positivity and moving forward and being excited if your body is not working together? Can I tell you now, when you are, and and please this is, I'm not saying you are unhealthy when you have depression like it's your fault. I'm just using an example. You know how difficult it is to pray for someone else for faith if you're struggling with depression on the inside? 
Your, your body, you are part of this body. It affects things in your life. And being healthy is important, but you guys know this by now. You know us knows by now, okay? So the second point of advice is going to get much worse, okay? But don't get up and leave. It's locked, okay? This is going to sound contradictory to what I'm saying. And I want you to be the normal wealthy as well, okay? I want you to be rich. I want you, and everyone says, yes. Ow. I don't know. I've been doing lotto for seven years, and you know, I've been paying someone else lottery ticket. I don't know. They, I don't, no, I'm not playing lotto. But the, the, the point being is, I want you to understand something when it comes to the normal idea of money. There's nothing wrong about being wealthy with money. With money, there's nothing wrong. On the contrary, I would like to encourage people to say, if you've got ability and you've got skill and you can develop and you can grow and you can build this out, this is fantastic. But this sounds so contradicting to my advice. Well, your problem, okay? I ran out of points, so I had to put in something there, okay? So, on this point, I want to discuss quickly greed versus stewardship. Did you know that stewardship is a principle in the Bible? Now, I'm going to talk about this in a second, okay? okay? <laughs> I want to explain, you know, I'm a very good pastor, so to explain this in the most influential depth way that I can, I just borrowed the dictionary, and so we're just going to go to greed, to the next one for me. So greed is explained as this. Intense and selfish desire for something, especially wealth, power, or food. JJ, what do you for your snacks as you sleep on your hand? Okay, I'm just, I'm just mentioning it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, sometimes they wake up, then they, they had, there was three cannolis in the fridge, and then when they wake up, there's only one. And I don't know what happened. There's five people in the house. But listen to this. When it comes to money, I want you to understand stewardship for one second. In business, this is the most beautiful quote I've seen. Stewardship is the responsible planning, management, and use of resources with the aim of ensuring their sustainability. Do you know that it's fine to have sustainable income? Do you know that's okay? Do you know that it's fine to be responsible in your planning? Do you know it's okay to be responsible in your finances? Okay, It's okay. You don't have to be poor. If you have money, don't let anyone make you feel guilty because you are planning your finances, you are saving your money, you are showing up for work, you are building in skill sets, God is opening doors for you. You do not have to be shy because you have finances in your bank. Because God rewards good stewardship. Now I knew we were going to be quiet because this is a church. Now I'm talking about six packs and a lot of money in the bank, okay? Having big muscle. No, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that as well. I'm building you up. I want you to understand that your health is important. I want you to understand that your wealth is important. Why? And this is going to become the third point of being W-E-W-L, wealthy. Because I want you to be healthy, I want you to be wealthy, and then I want you to be stealthy. Okay. It's the best I got for you guys this morning, okay? Oh, it's a busy week. Okay, that's, that's, that's it. That's stealthy. All right, we're going to end in prayer this morning. <laughs> why does your health matter, and why does your wealth matter? Because you can use that to be a massive influence in the lives of other people. People, when you have money, you can be generous in other people's lives. When you are physically healthy, you can show up and support them. I have the ability to lift my dad out of the bed. I can put him in his chair. I can push him around. I've got my health at the stage. My health causes me to be a blessing. When I have extra money in my bank, and I go and I purchase someone a bread. I purchase them some groceries. My wealth helps me to be a blessing. So I want you to understand this. But you can use your health and you can use your wealth to build yourself up. But you can, or you can use your health and your wealth to be stealthy. And what I mean by that is helping people without it having benefit you in any sense of the word. If you want to be wealthy, W-E-L-L, it's fine with your health, it's fine with your money, but then the purpose and the build-up must be 
that you are doing things responsible in your life with a heart that it can always be a blessing to someone else in your life. But the challenge is we understand health, we understand money, and then we stop by that two points. And then we focus on health and money and health and money and health and money. And when we're going to go over this parable, I've got four minutes left. Only oh, it's not by slides, but okay, fantastic. Is that when it comes to following Jesus and being well, W E W L, if you want to be wealthy, you use your blessings, you use your open doors to be stealthy and build into the lives of the people around you. Otherwise, you are just being greedy. You are not being a good steward of the blessings that you enjoy. Now I'm going to say probably, it's going to get a little bit more worse now, okay? If you thought the heaven part was shocking, wait until you hear this sentence, okay? You guys ready? Faith is not a substitute for bad discipline, ladies and gentlemen. When it comes to your health, I can pray for you non-stop. But if you apply bad discipline in your life, faith will not be a substitute. In your wealth, ladies and gentlemen, we can pray for finances, we can pray for open doors, but God does not work in fraud. You can't give a 10 rand and suddenly gives a 1,000 rand somewhere in the bank. SARS will file a fraud case against you. I can assure you of that, okay? It's not being a blessing, it's fraud. Faith is not a substitute for being bad with your finances. Faith is not a substitute, substitute for not showing up and looking for a job. Faith is not a substitute for being lazy. But God can take what you have. And when we apply faith to that, He can increase that for you. But God does not bless laziness. God does not bless bad discipline, ladies and gentlemen. God is looking for leaders. He's looking for stewards. He's looking for people who are willing to put up their hands and say, Lord, I'm here to make a difference here where I am now. There's no blessing in giving your heart to God and waiting to go that side. But when you roll up your sleeves, you begin to pray for the people around you. When you roll up your sleeves and you create opportunities for people. When you roll up your sleeves and your heart is to make a difference in the lives of people around you. We've got such a phenomenal team showing up behind the scenes serving so that we can have a service. To serve. If you are willing to use your health and your wealth to be stealthy, that is what it means to be heaven here on earth and make a tangible real difference in this life that God has given you. Stop waiting to go somewhere and be Jesus here now. And in this context, for a minute and 30 seconds, I want to go to our scripture again, but just two scriptures. And I want, I've explained this heaven thing to you, and I'm just quickly going to talk about um, Luke 6, 25. But Abraham said, child, remember that, in, that you in your lifetime received your good things. Listen to this. The accountability... And the response of Abraham was referring to this lifetime. I want you to pick up on that. Not where the rich man is now. What he did in his lifetime. Okay. And he says, you received good things and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in anguish. And I want you to pick up on this, okay? Abraham, um, the, the whole narrative over here is talking about what the rich man did here and Lazarus did here. Okay? And carry on to the next one. I want you to, to pick up on this. And besides all this, between us and you are a great chasm. I want you to pick up on this. The, the, the parable makes it very clear. There's no transitioning after. You can't decide to be generous then. Why? Because we are called to be heaven here. And when we become heaven here, that becomes our destination then. You guys are very quiet. Man, it feels like I'm preaching to the right church. Okay. 
<laughs> you guys didn't catch that one. It's fine. But I want to give you a warning in this part as we're talking about being W E L wealthy. If we lose focus, the things that make us W E L wealthy can quickly make us W E A wealthy. I'm going to say this again. If we lose focus, the blessings that are there to make us well can become a stumbling block and makes us the rich fool. How do we prevent this? We become heaven here. How do you prevent looking successful on the outside and being foolish on the inside? You become heaven here. You become Jesus, as they say, with skin on here, now. Not tomorrow, not next week, now, now. In your family, in your relationships, with your friends, at your local church, with people that you are surrounded in. Just be the blessing right now where you are. And you will be following Jesus much more than you ever think. The biblical guide to life and how to be W-E-L-L, wealthy, always revolves around our actions towards others. So I'm just going to quickly recap and then I'm done. I'm a minute over my time. Your physical health, fantastic. But if you're doing that so that you can show how awesome you are, it's called vanity. That's not what I'm talking about. But if you take care of your health and you're in such a condition that you can help other people, you are being heaven on earth. If you can generate wealth and you build out an empire and you build up an organization and you save your money and you work frugally and you work responsibly like a good steward and you can use that resources to be a blessing to other people you are being heaven on earth because you're changing the opportunities of others but if you're only using that for yourself you are being a foolish rich man which brings us to our third be stealthy with what you do. Build your health so that you can be stealthy. Build your wealth so that you can be stealthy. And if you hit this pattern, then the inside will become well. The inside will become healthy. And then we'll notice we will become more like Jesus every single day. And we will become life-giving in our community. We will become a source of comfort, a source of forgiveness, a source of mercy, a source of grace, a source of wisdom. We can become heaven for people in their lives. And this is not a self-righteous thing. Oh, look how awesome I am. No, 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 no. We want to follow Jesus. We, we believe in this vision of the kingdom that he brought. And we need to participate in that. It's about following the example that Jesus left us so that we can be a blessing to those around us. We'll carry on next week. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your faithfulness and your mercy and your grace in our lives, Father. Father, sometimes we, we kind of give you the responsibility to try and fix things that we don't want to fix ourselves. So, Father, it's not an approach of our, look how strong we are, look how potent we are, Father, but we've got a desire to be like Jesus. Jesus came and healed the sick. Jesus came and brought forgiveness. Jesus came and He changed the world. And because we belong to Your kingdom, it's our desire to be that for other people in their lives. We want to be a stepping stone so that they can draw closer to You, Father. May you give us the discipline that we need. Father. May you give us the strength. Father. Father, may you protect our hearts that we don't become vain in the blessings that we can enjoy. And may we never grow too big or too smart or too arrogant that it's below us to help our neighbor next to us. Thank you for your faithfulness. We pray that in Jesus' wonderful name and everyone says, Amen and Amen.